Hey, Dustin Vanoy here. I want to share a little bit about open source software from time to time. And in this one, I'm going to do an OSS spotlight on Unity Catalog. So you may have heard about Unity Catalog in the context of Databricks and how it is included within a Databricks workspace and something you can leverage there. Some of the benefits that exist within the Databricks workspace aren't in the open source version yet. But let's talk a bit about where this open source version fits in some of the things it's already capable of, and a little bit about where to keep an eye on the roadmap for it. So let me start by talking about why I think this is important. So number one, it's flexible. So we are able to run this locally for development and testing. It's going to work with various tools, so we aren't going to be as prone to potentially vendor lock-in. You can already access Unity Catalog, the Databricks hosted Unity Catalog from Snowflake and other providers. Uh, this gives us a way to run the open source version where we want to, um, and we can connect it to our own cloud storage. So then another reason I would suggest it is for easy integration. It works with the three major clouds, Azure, AWS, and Google Cloud. You can run this open source version and have it connected to your cloud storage in those environments. It's going to integrate with various data processing tools. Um, the one that I will look at is the one I've been experimenting with, which is open source Apache Spark connected to it. Another reason is unified management. I think it's listed as unified governance on the official um, Unity Catalog site. So we're talking about the ability to organize and control access to different kinds of objects uh, all within your data platform. And so various formats for data, Delta Lake, Iceberg, and Hoodie via Uniform, Parquet, JSON, CSV, et cetera, are covered by Unity Catalog. You can have tables on top of those. You, besides tables though, you can also secure and govern and catalog files and functions and AI models, okay? Now, number four, I would say, and the reason why uh, I'm making this video is I think it's a great learning opportunity. So you can run an experiment yourself uh, without having to worry about um, cloud costs other than if you connect it to your cloud storage, of course, there's storage costs involved. You can also use it to look into the code and understand a bit about how data catalogs work under the hood and um, it can be valuable for your career growth just to see a bit about how this data catalog is implemented and keep an eye on as it progresses you're going to probably see it start to play a bigger and bigger role in production environments in the future now the difference between databricks uh, version of unit catalog and open source version um, my my desire is that that will start to um, be less of a gap right and if you look at the roadmap there's a lot of capabilities that are still trying to make it into open source at this point um, we've seen this in the past with other open source projects where they really do start to catch up and mature and become production ready uh, after a period of time where the community is involved and in driving the roadmap for it. So I think it's a great thing to experiment with. It can be used in your development and testing at this point. Um, and that's about as far as I would you know, suggest going with it right at the moment that I record this video. So here I'm at docs.unicatalog.io. So I'm in the documentation portion of the official site. I will jump into the quick start momentarily since that's what I want to just show a little bit of what that looks like um, so that if you do want to get started, you kind of have a glimpse of it before you start following the steps yourself. Essentially, though, it does highlight um, the reasons I tried to summarize the ones I think are most important here uh, about why this is valuable. Um, the thing that I do want to highlight specifically is it mentions first release of UC Unity Catalog focuses on a core set of APIs for tables on structured data and AI assets. So um, some of the things I believe that you'll hear and see about why Unity Catalog is such a great thing uh, are, are still in the works for the open source version. Uh, this link for looking at the proposed roadmap for um, Q4 uh, has a bit about what different things are already supported. Something that's coming up in a future version that I think would be really useful is Manage Catalog and Manage Schema, where you actually set the path for the data at the catalog or the schema level, and you don't have to define a location with each, which each table you create. Part of the reason I see that as valuable is then if I'm taking code that I use within like my Databricks environment, where I don't have to specify the location, it's a managed table in my Databricks Unity catalog, it would also be something I could take that same code and use it with my open source Unity catalog uh, at a minimum for my development and testing environments, okay? So there's quite a bit listed here. Uh, I'm not the expert in all of this. There are community meetups, uh, virtual meetups that you can join into to be a part of the conversation and hear what's being planned and what's being decided. So back to the docs, let's look at a few things hands-on since that's what I um, like to show you in these videos. So if I go to getting started guide and I jump to the quick start, 
Um, here we're going to have the way to run Unity Catalog locally. And I think that's a good spot to start. And then if you wanted to, you're really gonna be running from the code. So if you wanna start experimenting by changing code, that's a great way to learn. Um, it can be pretty complicated. So that's not necessarily what everyone's going to choose to do. So the first thing we'll do is start by cloning this. So we just copy this path and we'll go and clone this uh, to our local environment. Um, note that you have to have Java 17 installed on your machine. So um, feel free to use Java version and check what you have. If you're familiar with your Java setup, you may already have it somewhere. If you don't have it set up yet, I recommend using SDK man. Um, I use this both on Mac and on Windows subsystem for Linux. I will be using Windows sus subsystem for Linux in this video to run Unity Catalog. I haven't explored the possibilities of trying to do this just on you know regular Windows. Um, so I would use WSL as my recommendation based on my little bit of experimenting with, with this on a Windows machine. Once you have those, you can set your current version uh, using SDK Man. And then you wanna make sure your Java home is set. Uh, I haven't really tried without setting Java home, but ultimately um, you'll, you'll tend to run into issues if Java home's not set um, for these types of projects. All right, once we get through that, we want to, from our Unity catalog cloned repository, actually run this bin start uc server command. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So here I'm in my WSL terminal. Let me clear out and we will go ahead and from the directory, I am in my OSS directory, which is where I'm putting these types of projects. I need to get into the actual project directory of Unity catalog, okay? Uh, let me clear that again so we can see what happens next. Note that after you set your default Java via SDK man, you may need to restart your terminal session or open up a new terminal session. You can check which one's current by doing SDK current Java. Okay. Um, now if I go ahead and try that command for start UC server. Okay, so my UC has started and I can see that it's uh, 0.3.0 snapshot. So it's actually um, the development version that's working towards 0.3, not that this has been released yet. So as we go through the uh, quick start a bit more, it's going to give us some tips on how we see what we already have and how we can um, create tables and things like that. Let's go ahead and start by running this. Okay, so I've got my server running on one terminal tab. I'm going to go ahead and um, try this command from my Unity catalog directory and see what we get. Okay, so I can see it came with a default catalog already called Unity with some uh, tables in there. So let's go ahead and create our own catalog. We will call this one um, my catalog. There we go. That's been created. It is not a managed catalog, which means there's not a path assigned to it. There's not a location by default. Now within there, I can create a schema. Let's go ahead and give this the name of my schema. Why not? So if I go and list my catalogs, I can see I've got two catalogs now. Um, I can go ahead and list schemas, but essentially it's going to show me the schemas within a specific catalog. So let's check that it created what I wanted it to create. And now I can go and start to work with this um, to create tables and do other things. Okay, so let's take a look at running a bit of Spark code that's actually going to run locally, use that local UC server, uh, create some schemas, update some tables, and query across multiple catalogs. So a few things to note, uh, when we look at the code in a second, you'll see that I print out my starting catalog list. Uh, in that case, it only found the one catalog. Then I'm able to um, also take a look at current catalog, which was actually different than what's in the catalog list. And that's a Unity catalog. And then we query the three tables that we created here. Coming to look at the code, um, we can see that I'm using PySpark, uh, just a Spark session. This is going to be running locally. And uh, there's a couple things I had to set up. Most importantly was that uh, I added three jars to my default PySpark uh, jars folder. And that way I have the Unity Catalog Spark, the Delta Spark, and the Delta Storage libraries available for me. Uh, without that, some of these commands uh, will probably break for you. Uh, the alternative is if I want to run with uh, standalone Apache Spark running and I do a Spark submit, 
I could spark submit with this packages a parameter. And in this case, the delta spark one seems to grab the delta storage library that's necessary in my experience. So a couple of options to get the right jars. Uh, looking at my spark session, this is where a lot of the setup happens. I'm going to have a default delta catalog. Uh, which is going to be called Spark Catalog. Then I'm going to define my Unity, my first Unity catalog, which is named Unity, uh, using the UC single catalog, uh, local host, and no token because this is just a local instance running. If you look at the docs, you'll see there's other ways to run this, and there's ways to point to a cloud storage location. Now I have a, an additional catalog, which is still using the Unity catalog, uh, set up and this is called my catalog and then I set my default catalog to unity and now we're off and running so I create three simple data frames in spark nothing special there so next I print my catalog list and my starting catalog then I can write to a table that has not been created yet by doing overwrite mode and giving it a path because this is going to be an external table I must specify this path and I can use that three part naming convention to save it to my Unity catalog default schema. My catalog and schema already exist, but the table is new. Moving on, I can also, they're gonna do this in a different catalog that's not the current catalog. I can go ahead and create a schema, my schema two within my, my catalog. And I can also create a table there. I'm creating it with the SQL syntax, specifying the path. Since I've already defined the table, I can actually use my data frame write without that special path option and write directly to that table and it'll go to the location defined up above when I created the table. So I'm starting to work with multiple schemas, multiple catalogs and able to write some data to it. I will say if you're used to working with Databricks, not every command will be available here. Now, a couple other things to note, if I want to change what my current catalog is, I can use these commands here. Um, that catalog object came from my PySpark libraries. In addition, I can save, uh, create a table and save to the uh, Spark catalog, which is different from how Unity catalog is working, but it is something that you might want to use when running locally. All right, now all the way at the bottom, we can see I have a Spark SQL statement that will join these three together. Uh, and then that gave us the result that we did a show on. So notice that I uh, printed the catalog list and the starting catalog and we did some things that succeeded and eventually we showed those results of querying the three tables together. And that's what we saw on this tab. So that was our look at Unity Catalog open source along with the connectivity from Apache Spark and how we would do that. Uh, hopefully this was a nice kind of intro get started idea of how this could be useful for you to work with uh, and then of course you can go much deeper with the documentation and keep an eye on how this project progresses. Uh, if this was useful for you and you want to hear more about data engineering, especially with Databricks or open source technologies like this, subscribe to this channel. I'll see you next time.